gear together, snacks, masks, sanitizer. Let's well, do it. Let's do it. So where are we off to, Jace? We're off to Nicole Begovich's to catch her foal. She's um, previously was quiet and now they've got it in, given it one jab for a vaccination and now can't get anywhere near it for love nor money. So we're off to see if we can catch. I'm a designated driver today and filmer. Um, gonna freeze. <laughs> you bought all the necessary clothes though, so. Yeah, I wouldn't normally come out on trips, especially at the moment with uh, with COVID, but um, yeah, I should be masked up and wearing so many clothes. I think I'll be all right. It's a day out, baby, we're out. I know, this is the first time I've like left Gouthurst in um, probably, what, since before Christmas? Yeah, it's been months. It's just, yeah, I've forgotten how to drive. <laughs> it's lucky this is an automatic, okay? You're making me feel really... Uh... Yeah, making you feel safe. <laughs> I've got Nicole with me. We'll just have a quick chat with Nicole and we'll sort of get the, get the lowdown, really. Hi, hi, Jason. Thank you for coming to help me. <laughs> no problems. So, what... Um, it all started a month ago? Yep, about a month ago and uh, a process of elimination. I, you know, I tried by the book to do daily handling, feet trimming, all the usual things you do with the youngsters because we know they have a working career. This in particular, he's been bred as a dressage horse. So, you know, might as well start as we mean to go on. Um, however, um, joining the dots, the last time we halted him, we had the vet here to sedate, to do a feet trim and flu vaccination. Clearly he's clever, clearly he's retained and associates what that means. And we have tried sedating and sedation with the local vet had reached a level where we felt medically we were sort of on the edge now. I mean, really we sedated him enough to knock a rhino out <laughs> and still <laughs> got nowhere. <laughs> and, and the reason you were, there he is, there, there he is, is in the background. And so the reason you did this was yes. to put, to get the head collar on to, yes. to start handling. Start handling. But we had a conversation before yeah. and Nicole was telling me that you could walk up, into, walk up to him in the field and give him a stroke and catch him and no problem. So off that sort of almost off that one experience, one experience. of catching him with a head collar, yeah. putting the doing the needle yeah. after that he wouldn't let you anywhere near him. Absolutely. I mean, we've tried all the tricks in the book. I've sat in the stable with him, um, tried join up. We've tried food, um, you know, you sort of exhaust all things and it, it, you can see that if it's, I don't know if it's a fear now, is it a, a habit, a behavior? And I think it's a case of maybe if with your help and assistance, if he understands that this is a safe space, that we're not doing this to hurt him, we can move forward but yeah. at the minute i feel for his long-term well-being this is a behavior we need to address now hence okay. why you're the man in the business okay so there we, we were discussing this on the way up and we were actually like jason's like oh, nicole's probably never seen a lasso before and i was like of course she's like a southern southern texan girl in eastern tennessee yeah, so, eastern tennessee which, so which leads did. which leads me on to the options I never did it. <laughs> so it leads me on to the options yeah. so with a lasso or without <laughs> there we are <laughs> so i bought a lasso i've bought a rope head collar because sometimes when you're handling metal head collars it jingles and gets caught and it and that can start them so and i've got a um a long whip just just to sort of get some contact with him and start start the process so He's making a lot of racket in the background, so I reckon he's probably ready to go. I'm going to start this with without a lasso and just see what he feels like. And the only reason I'm starting without a lasso is because I know he's been handled and caught before. If he hadn't been caught before and was completely untouched, I wouldn't even try. I'd go in with a lasso, catch him and go through the process that way. So while those guys are talking horses, I'm here with the uh, with the cool guys. We're in the cool gang here. Who are these called? So this is Fleck. Fleck. We've got Bam Bam. Bam Bam. Here we go. Vincent. Vincent. And Pebbles, the naughtiest <laughs> of them all. Okay. <clears throat> So all I'm doing now is that I'm going to 
I'm going to push into that, that back wall and I'm going to keep him down. Keep out of his kicking, kicking distance. Just keep moving him around. And I'm just looking for his eyes. He's turned away from me again. And I'm just, just about having it there. You just have a little look at him there. That's what I'm looking for. There we go. I'll just... So that's what I'm looking for, that movement, he's looking to run away from me and I'm just keeping him moving around, he is very anxious and you can see he's quick moving and really quite flighty but what I need to do is teach him to turn and face me his evasion is to stick his head in the back corner and that's basically saying I want to be as far away from this guy as possible and I'm now just teaching him um, actually the best thing to do is turn and have a look at me and see look I'm just standing here I'm not a threat so he's had a little bit of a moment to think actually looking at this guy is 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 a good place to be so we'll, we'll now just start to you know actually I might even just move and just see if you'll follow me a little bit or see if he gets shy with my movement and he's Good. So he's, he's having a good think, he's thinking I don't really want to turn away too much but he is a bit um, inclined to check his options so let's see if you'll just give me a little sniff, just give me a little touch, that's fine and we'll do a little bit of an advance and retreat and just see how he goes if he goes away from me that's fine, I've got a tool that I can use to correct and like I say I wouldn't be able to do this with a completely wild horse but he has been handled before, so so um, he he'll he'll sort of search his memory banks and start to think, well, you know, maybe I can let this this person touch me, and maybe it is all right. And he is, so that's great. Obviously, he's made the association with the head collar, and I haven't introduced that yet. So when that comes, we might have to re revisit um, the little process that you saw initially you know he's now seen me you know I've moved the head collar around a bit and I've sort of just just even lifting it and organizing it he, he's getting a little anxious so you know I still may have to go to a lasso but you know we'll see how we go so so when I, when I do show him the head collar that's what we don't want. Can't bring that over you guys. There we go. That was well well held, Penny. <laughs> there was a moment there I said, oh no, I've just squashed, squashed my wife. Um, so he's a pretty good natured little fella. Sometimes I get horses when I'm doing this and you go to touch them and they really are worried and they don't want you near them. Well, they will, you know, bite you and look to strike you and you know, won't let you near their head and those horses, you don't have much choice but to use a lasso and teach them to stay with you that way. Okay, let's see. We'll bring a little bit of rope into the picture, what happens? Good, I don't want to make any sudden movements, so I've got to make sure everything's pretty right he's really curious he's re well i say curious he's going what do you got there what are you doing having worked with somebody from south africa um i look for chewing i don't know if jason if you say when they lick and chew and lower their heads yeah do you find that as a more positive response yeah it's a sign of relaxation because obviously when a horse is tense their jaw is locked it's like this yeah and then when they relax a little bit they'll you know, they'll stretch their jaw off and that's where the licking and chewing sort of comes from. But it was very much a night day reaction. It was one day fine, the next day this was Yeah, this this is how he was. Yeah. He's just seeing the rope out the other side of his um, his 
just about tolerating it. So that was that Nicola, you know, I probably could have caught him much quicker with a lasso and funnily enough a lot of people talk about you know lasso has been quite a, you know oh gosh you know you're sort of strangling them all that sort of thing it, it it really doesn't have any long-term effects on a on a horse lassoing them, lassoing them and and actually because you can get it done much quicker they tend to feel far less stressed although it's quite intense for a, for those couple of moments when they first have a lasso on them um, it's uh, it, because it gets done really quickly they tend to go oh okay you've got me now what and then you can start to get it done but for him I took this option first because I know having spoken to you that he can be handled and it's just a matter of accessing those memories and showing them that flight's not a great idea actually Um, it's not a bad idea for vets to come in smelling a little bit more like horses okay. and a little less not like clinical. yeah not not so clinical and yeah. it's sometimes hard for them because they've got you know horses are super sensitive with their smell and you know you just sit in a car with with that sort of you know drugs and that sort of that smell that sanitized that sanitized, sanitized that type yeah. thing or in, in latex way, gloves yeah. all that sort of stuff it just has this residual smell which they pick up on and i believe they can smell it to four and a half five feet away the horses yeah yeah they know and so smelling the dirty old horse train is probably not so bad <laughs> so he's moving his back end around there's a little forward step there you go there's a little forward step good perfect and then just give him a rub down that side yeah i would be on the other side move smoothly always when you're moving around him Nicole, yeah. keep an eye on his face because mm -hmm. if his face is like this, what are you doing? And his ears locked on you, and he's sort of a bit worried about things. Yeah, yeah but just when you're moving, just move a little bit. It's all right, mate. Sometimes you just pause for a second, it's enough for him to go, it's fine, and then carry on giving him a stroke and that sort of thing. But yeah, and then drop your rope, walk away, drink a tea, go and do some other work, come back down, revisit him. You'll have your horse back in no time. That was absolutely incredible, Jason. I can't thank you enough for your knowledge and expertise. Um, I, I'm not too proud to admit when I when you know help is needed. I thoroughly recommend Jason and your horsemanship. You've, we've worked together for a few years now on yeah, a few yeah. of my horses, and um, I'm absolutely speechless. Uh, we it goes to show patience and care and a nice approach can win at the end of the day yeah, yeah. without any pressure and, and always have the lasso as a backup i know i'm so disappointed <laughs> that there was i no know lasso you <laughs> yay, yay! <laughs> why don't we lasso I'm the child <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh. but that goes to show how in, 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 to put it into perspective the hours and hours and the last few weeks i put into this that i think it was about 20 minutes little techniques can make all the difference and it's it's why so knowing these things they're not difficult but they can change the game can't they? It yeah. is, and, and it's something I'm going to apply to my own horsemanship it's taught me something today yeah. I think it's something that I can apply to all ages and ranges of horses and I'll take that with me for life now so thank you cool no worries no oh, that's right. a good testimonial yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well done <laughs> I'm good on TV. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. I know we're on. To, we're on the road again. We'll um, back in the dirty old truck. <laughs> not too bad. Come on. Right. Oh, I'm just, still trying to warm up after that little uh, job at Nicole's, but um, so many clothes on. <laughs> oh my God, it's freezing. 
Um, but we're, we're on our way home and um, as is Penny's way, she's just had a conversation with someone on the phone and um, they've, they've... There's a very pretty horse up the road. A very pretty horse that has a few issues and they're, <laughs> look at, they're looking to, to sell or something and I'm just like, oh no. Jason will fix that. Jason will fix that, be fine. Uh, just honestly, and the, you know, a lot of the horses that I have, they're, they're not very expensive. They're, they're nice horses and I like them, but they, they're quite quirky. And this, this is why, because we, Benny finds me these horses that nobody else seems to want. I sort of get them manageable and um, yeah, anyway. Let's, uh, we, we can't afford to buy the ones, uh, you know. No, well, no, I know that, but, the Take you know, the it's, there's a lot of time and effort that goes into these horses, and when you've got a stable full of other people's horses, it, it yeah, it's, anyway, we'll, we'll see, I, I suppose I can be convinced of these things. It's just, when when know, I say I can be, I have um, been. We're in the, we're in the area, it seems daft not to, um, not to drop in, at least. <laughs>